Hello, back, back to the bottom. My name is Beast the Devil. Back with more Clover Days. Uh, I am once again starting the recording at like 11 p.m. It's going to become a fucking pattern. However, today I have an excuse. I had one yesterday as well, technically. But that one was because I decided to take a nap after work. So not really an excuse at the same time, but this time I have an excuse, namely the D&D session was until 10 p.m. again, and I had to prepare some stuff afterwards. So yeah. Anyways. And this is the place where we were supposed to meet him. What the, fuck's, what the fuck's happening? Huh? Hold on. When we reached the observation deck, we could feel the gentle breeze caressing my cheeks. What the fuck's happening? Huh? Okay. Okay. I see what's going on. Let's see. Open up here, go here, scroll down. It doesn't automatically scroll up. So it was an issue with the game. Good to know. Incidentally, uh. Now the manga I started reading, uh, Richan. Uh. Funny enough, the character design herself really reminds me of. <laughs> of fucking, uh. Maria. So, who knows, they the fucking dude that draws that one has taken inspiration. It's precious this far, so... Anyways, this is the place where we're supposed to meet him. Alright, it behaves now. When we reach the observation deck, I can feel the gentle breeze caressing my cheeks. There are cherry blossom trees growing here as well. There are beautiful petals fluttering about in the wind. Yeah. Huh. While I was staring at the trees, I heard my name being called, so I looked in the direction of the voice. Well, immediately we have a fucking CG. Also, I was told that uh, this game doesn't technically have any true routes. But the closest thing to a true route is apparently these twins. Because in order to get to their route, you have to pick a choice in the past. <laughs> like during a, a fucking flashback. Which is weird. I don't have to explain why. Because realistically, no choices matter if you choose that one. And at the same time, it wouldn't make sense if any choices beforehand have an influence on the choice back then. <laughs> Anyways, I was staring at the tree. Uh, while I was staring at the trees, I heard my name being called. So I looked in the direction of the voice. Among those rosy petals is a girl staring directly at me with the blue gem-like eyes. I know this girl. Yeah, I like you a lot. What are we gonna promise? Oh. It says your memories resurface in my mind. This girl standing before me must be her. Is that you, Hikaru? Hekiru. It's not Hikaru then. To be fair, you switched up your hairstyle into something different, while your twin switched up your her hairstyle into what it used to be back then. Another the girl with the same face. Might have a grown sealer or something? Of course there is. Uh, Heikiru and Hikaru 
look exactly alike. Their hairstyles are different, but the two of them are identical twins. These two were always also part of our friends as kids, but we abruptly parted when they moved out of the country ten years ago. I can see why she'd know I'd n uh, why she'd said I'd know when I meet you two now. Mainly because came back just like you promised me, Hekiru. <laughs> Smile at her while she repeatedly nods. Damn! Ha! <laughs> ah! Jesus! <laughs> All of a sudden, she gives me a kiss. But but what? What's that for? Why? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, but why? Why are you kissing me? <laughs> Upon looking around, I see that we've garnered an audience. They're staring at us, shock in their eyes. Her voice sounds familiar as well. From where? Specifically, it's also like a character that tends to be like more on the grumpy side, I guess you could say. Fuck, now nah, I have to look it up. <sighs> Over days. V and D B. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh. Ah, yep. There we go. It's it, uh. It's Rika. Which is always funny because uh, but if it's Rika, I can just say it's Rika because it works in both ways. Since the V A. Is called uh, like one of the aliases is Kitami Rika, and she voices Narusawa Rika from Hoshiori Yumemira. Always, always works out funnily. Oh, and it's also like Reiko from Aokana and Rinchu from Magikoi. <laughs> but most importantly, Rika from Hoshiori Yumemira. But yeah, now we know why, how I know that voice. And she apparently, apparently also voices someone in Tohar 2. Which you repeatedly do not want me to play for some reason. I actually really want to play that game, if you can't tell. <laughs> oh, she also voices someone in, someone in Mashirio Symphony. Fancy. Oh, she voices someone in White Album. Who is it? Okay, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, I was about to act... Uh, oh, wait, no, no, those are okay. Those are okay. Since Setsuna is just the uh, one. Being a bit of a silly... As you could say. Oh, and Senna from Noble Works as well. And Otome from Onigoko. Yeah, you, you, you get the picture. At least I hope you do, because... Uh, I don't know how you wouldn't. Anyways, uh, close it. Oh, hold on! I just yep, it's Karen. It's also Karen from Making Lovers. What, girls? Please calm down. She was the one who kissed me. 
<laughs> She's fucking going in. <laughs> Okay, slow down here, please. Why are you kissing me out of the blue anyways? Your love. Huh? What? I reflexively scream out in response at her ballistic confession. It was the beginning of April. The sky was orange and the cherry blossoms swayed in the wind. In that moment, I knew that my life was going to change drastically. Intro sequence. You know what, actually, I'm gonna just do this. Get rid of that. I don't know if this song is safe to be listened to. And I don't know if the images are safe to be looked at. So I'm just going to, you know... Look away, you know. Uh. Song's good though. What the fuck? Why are people suddenly saw uh, talking? People are suddenly talking out of nowhere. That was fucking weird. Ah, oh, they're, they're making out all of a sudden. Let's immediately look away. <laughs> That's not good. The song fucking slaps, though. Especially props to the fucking drummer, Jesus. That drummer is going ham. Fucking props to that drummer. <laughs> Just notice that it also has like a sub name. Like quote unquote sub name because of uh, the, that fucking weird uh, unforgettable 10 years with you or something that's, that it's set there. Which Tone War games also tend to have that. So that's it. Actually, which, which, what is it again for the fucking tone works? Yeah, yeah for uh, for Hoshiori Yumebita at least. Hoshiori Yumebita. There we go. The memories of the, that day, memories of you, I wish upon a star to be always with you, is the subtitle, quote unquote, for, for Hoshiori and Mirai. What was it for Kinito Haruka? Gin. Iro. Haruka. I only need one space between that. 
Uh, that one was Winter Comes Around, We Meet Again. That one was short. I guess while we add it, might as well check for Hot Square 1 1. Hot Square 1 1 was uh, a beat of the heart, a hand which comes in con into contact with he loves becomes loving to one. That all makes sense. The others at least made sense. That one didn't. <laughs> Come fight! さしぶりの日本ということで、姫寿司の特上おにぎりをご用意しました。どうぞお召し上がりください。よ。お二人ともどうかなさいましたどうもこうもねえです。キスの件はまだ話がついてませんよ。そうだよ。こんな状況で納
Because these three girls are already having very negative reactions. Anger, jealousy, and embarrassment. Also, whenever Hekiru moves her face closer to mine, I recall the kiss we shared earlier, and my face starts burning up. Ah, and her lips were so soft. Ahem! Should have let the pressure rise anymore if this bomb's gonna explode. So, before all hell breaks loose, I gotta put the situation in order. So, I need to ask you, Hekiru, what was that promise you mentioned us making? Um, Anzuma, dear, could you not tell her lies, please? You make me sound like an old man who can't control his bowel functions, and I really don't want to picture that. I appreciate how devoted you are, but I really don't need help with that. そうですよ。お嫁さんとか奥さんとか一人で勝手に話を進めないでください。でも、誓いのキスもした。だから、後は結婚するだけ。なうじゃありません。誓いのキスですか。確かに、さっきのは情熱的で素敵なキスだなと
go out for a period of time. I can't just jump right into marriage. Well, since we were friends as kids, I guess we already know each other well enough. Well, I mean, it all happened so abruptly that I didn't have the time to process what you were trying to do. It wasn't bad, but the question is about whether I liked it or not. I'm sorry! Look, I don't hate you by any means, Heikido. I have to be honest here. No, not in the romantic sense. That's not what I said. Look, can we all just take a deep breath and calm down? Oddly enough, I don't recall Heikido being this assertive when we were kids. As a matter of fact, she always stuck me, uh, struck me as a extremely shy and laid back. <sighs> just, it just feels like we're jumping the gun way too much with all this talk of marriage and whatnot. I don't even remember promising you that when... <laughs> okay, maybe I did! Sorry, it happened 10 years ago and my, so my memory is a little fuzzy. Well, to be fair, he always also promised one other girl that he'd marry them when they grew up, so... <laughs> Sorry. I've been apologizing for chasing for things after, the, after thing these past few minutes. But I can't help but... I've helped the fact that my memories aren't clear. Maybe if I had some sort of impetus, I could remember. At least that's what it feels like. なるほど。二人は結婚の約束をしていたのか。なら話は早い。鏡家は優秀ある家柄だ。相手としても申し分ない。これを機に両家の関係を深めるのも。ダディは黙っててください。次おかしなこと言ったら髪ごと髭を
still heartwarming to know that you missed me that much, but still. My sister scowled pretty menacingly at me, though, so I can't exactly jump for joy. Hmm. Oops. Whenever she starts talking art, she gets completely serious. She's been painting, studying under her father ever since she was little. She won a prize in some famous overseas contest for her skills. Not much of an art aficionado, and even if uh, Kagami Hekiru, the great painting prodigy, tried to explain to me what marks art so great herself, I probably wouldn't get it. But I know very well how much effort and passion she puts into her paintings. I can so vividly picture her as a kid, single-mindedly drawing like she was in her own little world. To me, she looked almost like a machine created for the sole purpose of producing art. Yeah? Was I? Crap, I was staring right at Heikido the whole time while I was reminiscing. But man, she really changed a whole lot. Her robotic face and I resembles one of a normal girl with emotions. No, I ain't! Okay, allow me to revise that statement. She's just plain weird now. But I'll take this over her being an emotionless robot. Maybe the reason for that change is what I think it is. アンディたちも写真や手紙を送り返してくれたよね。近況を知れて嬉しかったよ。いえいえ、最近は小ぶさたしてしまって申し訳ありませんでした。いいさ、今はメールがあるし、そっちの方が早くて便利だ。ですね
Alright, which room shall we have you stay in? Please try to get some. We gotta get up early tomorrow. Sure, I'll... Wait, what? I'm gonna sleep in that room with all you girls. Uh. <laughs> Both Dad and I cover our crotches, trembling like sheep before a wolf. What is wrong with her? Who just says something like that? No, I said that they could have changed a lot, but Ikaru changed just as much, if not more. Back when we were kids, she was more... Alright, see you tomorrow. Well, he did not fucking elaborate at all, did he? Huh? huh. I to finish my call with Tsubame and plug the phone into the charger, lean back in my chair and breathe a sigh. I can only imagine how much fun the girls are having in, their sis in, in my sister's room right now. Just picturing them all, them all sitting in there talking and laughing puts a smile on my face. It's a huge surprise, sure, but a good one. I'm really glad that Hekido and Hikaru are back. Apparently their first day of school is tomorrow, so they'll have a chance to see Tsubama and the others too. It's been ten whole years since we all last saw them in person. I imagine it's gonna be a big shock for everyone who to see how much they've changed. They've each changed. It's really been that long, huh? These were the first of them, weren't they? Open up my drawers and take out a bunch of envelopes. These things have really worn out over the years. The first few letters I got from Hikiru and Hikaru. I believe the first one arrived about a month or so after they moved. I don't remember how happy I was when it came. I spent the whole day reading it over and over again. That sure brings back memories. The time we spent together was fairly brief, all con things considered. But they're all fond memories that I'll never forget. Hekiru was the first person who didn't laugh at me when I told her about my special friend from the orphanage. Yuta-san, hmm? I'm uh, sure, come on in. You can hear her voice on the other side of the door. After I give her the okay, she quietly turns the doorknob and enters. Hello. So, what's up? Were you watching another scary movie in there? Ah, right. Just give me a moment while I get out of the desk. Now I got it. Your hands are already full with all our study materials. I got out a small table and placed it in the middle of the room, and then set out a cushion for Anri to sit on. My, our, my study desk doesn't really have room for both of us, so we always get out the small table and use it when we study. Okay, it's done. After setting down the study materials on the desk, Anri takes a seat. The textbooks we're using uh, aren't ones for any of our classes at school. They're business, business administration and international finance textbooks that Xi'an got for us. Ever since I started going to the main school, I've also been studying the the special curriculum at home since I'm the successor to the family. Anri has been studying alongside me the entire time as my study partner. I mean, you're welcome to study here with me, but now that you're a student at the main school, shouldn't you focus more on studying for your classes? Man, you're so sly. That must be why you always get such good grades. Yes, <coughs> mm, you make a fair point, sorry. While most kids spend their time outside of school doing extracurriculars or hanging out with friends, Andre spends it studying. So she does do some normal things, like browse the web le at late hours of the night. And that doesn't really paint a pretty picture for her future. Kind of, kind of worried now. 
You're at least able to keep up with all the stuff your peer, uh, all the stuff your peers at school talk about. Hip and trendy. Just like your other fellow kids. Gosh, she talks like some old man trying to be cool. I bet she picked up those words from Xi'an. I'd really like to inquire further about this, but uh, I'll probably end up with me incurring Shield's wrath, so uh, I'd better not. Alright then, please teach me very well, oh Professor Henry, the academic genius and certified hip kid. まあ、いいでしょ。今まで進学テストで忙しかったですが、私を縛るものはもう何もありません。これまで以上にピシバシ弁達を取りますから、覚悟してくださいね、お兄ちゃん。I just hope she spares me a bit of mercy for me. What's wrong? Yeah,小さい頃を思い出しまして、ユートさんと勉強をしてると、ヘキルさんたちがよく邪魔しに来ましたよね。Yeah, they did. But they're not kids anymore, so they know not to come to a boys' room during these late hours. Watching about all the things Hekiru said a ton over the course of the day, and maybe she would be fully prepared to do those things. Sounds getting along with the twins? That sounds about right, knowing them. Hekiru's... Hikaru seems to have developed a rough personality, though. Why didn't you take a bath with him? What, are you trying to get out of my chastity or something? ん、違います。勉強をサボるのではないかと思っただけです。タイはありません。うーん、オッケー、そうやのウィッシュズウィッヘキルスティーリングマイチャスティティ。そ、それはよくありません。ありませんが。ミュートさんにその気はなければ問
the elation you get when a concept you've been struggling with finally clicks in your in our heads is akin to completing a video game. But most of all, we know that all the effort we put in now will pay off later. The more knowledge we pack into our brains now, the better we'll fare in life when we're adults. That said, my love and knowledge doesn't exactly guarantee perfect grades. Unfortunately, I still lose out to easy me year after year. Maybe I just need to put in more effort. Maybe something deep down is preventing me from wholly devoting myself to, the stu to my studies. Lingering regret over, tripping, uh, over, over quitting the drama club. Family matters. Probably, or possibly even romantic feelings. I... I don't know. Yep, sorry. When I come back to my senses, I realize my head's about to hit the textbook. Looks like I started dozing off before I get lost in, once I got lost in thought. She can use her explanation with enthusiasm, highlighting some lines in the economics textbook with a marker while leaning her shoulder on me. But instead of listening to her, uh, all I could focus on is the softness of her shoulder. That was really distracting. Well, it says I have to deal with it. My sister's is pretty fierce right next to mine. Yes, that's the economics. これを希少価値と言い、大きいだけが正義ではないということがお分かりいただけるかと思います。Scarcity generates value. Hmm, I guess what a seat sweat to flower and nectar coming from her hair. Her cheeks flushed. Her cheeks flushed slightly pink from her bath are stunningly beautiful. うん。言うとさ、聞いてますか?え、I'm as she was feeling just a bit of, just as embarrassed by her body's touching as I was. Her small lips quiver when she lets out a moan. What? But she continues her explanation with her shoulders with our, her shoulders to touching mine, not making any effort to move away. That's how Anneli and I always studied together when we were younger, shoulder to shoulder. But back then we didn't hadn't yet hit puberty, so there was no embarrassment in doing it. Even despite the embarrassment that's there now, though, she's actively snuggling up against me, whether she's aware of it or not. The faint noises she occasionally makes feel so loud in this quiet room. And her body feels so warm, too. It's the same warmth I remember feeling ten years ago. It was in this kind of heat my body felt when Heiko kissed me and embraced me. It could be the sign of a brotherly of my brotherly love to her hurts her, unless it's something more. Stop that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just smells so nice. Did you use a different kind of shampoo? Your hair smells flowery. At all, I really like that smell on you. Makes you seem feminine and mature. Thank you very much. She smiles bashfully. That's the same sweet smile she'd often show me ten years ago. Her body, which still hasn't developed much since then, since uh, mixed with an alluring feminine scent, thin boundary between both worlds. Stop that! And that adorable imbalance just makes me want to hug her tight. Henri. I might. But I don't know, I can't do that. Can't say I love her as much as I want and have as many horny fantasies about her as I want, but can't act on my impulses. That's a line I can't cross. I'm her brother, she's my sister. So I'll just have to settle with touching shoulders. The warmth I feel from this is more than enough. Yeah, I'm good. Just 
She snuggles a little closer to me as she says that. We still have a bit of time at the tons and the twins are done with their bath. So let's just stay like this, shoulder to shoulder. I had a roommate back in the orphanage, a girl with black as, uh, with hair as black as mine. Her name was Noroka. She'd been with me as long as I'd been aware. Every time I shut myself in my room, hugged my knees and cried, she would talk to me and calm me down. She called me Onichan and followed me around wherever I went. I didn't know if she was my real sister or not. Since all the kids here were orphans, I had no way of knowing, really. But that didn't matter to me. Whenever I was feeling sad and alone, I'd lift my head and Nonoka would be there. That's all. And that was all I needed. And when it came time for me to say goodbye to her and go to Japan, I cried. Because she'd been my whole world up until that point. I hadn't known a life without her. And I told her that, though, she simply smiled and shook her head. <laughs> After her final words of encouragement, I left for Japan with my new dad, Mr. Yoshiomi. When I arrived and first saw Anri, I was shocked. She looked exactly like Nodoka. Then I actually called her that, and she responded by saying... Her eyes were filled with resentment. Once I calmed down and compared the two of them more closely, I realized that they weren't the same. Since I'd never seen a girl my age with black hair outside of Noroka before, I'd unconsciously overlapped them. When I told that to Noroka, she responded as such. And now she's not. I respond in a soft but peevish tone to Nordoka, who was smiling and sitting on the window frame. I'd made a terrible impression during my first encounter with my new sisters and gone on my bad side on their bad side, so I spent most of my time alone during that period. Whenever I was sitting in my room looking glum, Nordoka would appear out of nowhere, just like she always would when we were in the at the orphanage. <laughs> What do you mean? Was Nodoka at the orphanage already just a figment of his imagination? She giggles and walks over to the desk that I'm sitting at, then stands at her tiptoes and peeks in my notebook. How to write my hiragana correctly, I gotta learn Japanese as quickly as can, as quick as can. No, my handwriting sucks. Stangering what? Why do you always use so many big words, Zoroka? Why don't you? Tell doesn't sound very trustworthy. Nonoka really was a mysterious girl. She was much smaller, smaller than me, yet spoke with the eloquence of an adult. But the strangest thing about her wasn't that. <laughs> Hi, Anzu. Turn around upon hearing the door creak and found Anzu standing there. 
The moment I made eye contact with her, though, she went made red and shut her eyes. But she didn't run away. You can come in if you want. Oh. Hi, Lisa. Once I gave her permission, she walked in with slow steps, her face glued to the floor. She also seemed to be holding something in her arms, but I couldn't make out what it was. Uh, I don't know. What you need? I spoke as gently as possible, calling upon my experience speaking with the younger kids at the orphanage. She, really, she hardly ever came up and talked to me, so I saw it as a perfect opportunity to earn her trust. I knew I had to choose my words carefully. My blood immediately started boiling after she asked that question. My mind was a fluster of emotions and my breathing became heavier. She saw, she heard. No one was allowed to know about my conversations with Noroka except me. Shut up! <laughs> Slapped her hand with all my might. The sound resounded through the room as some fell onto the ground. But none of them mattered to me. I kept keep repeating in my head, go, go away, go away, go away. Oh, get out! Don't get me near me, near me again! <laughs> her face paled as she ran out of the room. I could see she was on the verge of crying. Ah! My body lost all strength and I fell to the ground where I stood. I was still struggling to catch my breath. My face was on fire and my eyes stung. Right at that moment, Nunoka appeared beside me, a displeased expression on her face. <laughs> so yeah, now we know. A figment of our imagination from the start I knew that. I had meant to yell at her like that. But I didn't want to accept that fact. Because I knew that I'd cry. I'd just keep studying. <laughs> Of someone who's younger than me. <laughs> I just didn't want to talk to her anymore. Not at that point in time. So I turned my back to her, faced the desk, and attempted to calm myself down. And what's that? There was a brown lump or something on the floor. It was all crumbled into pieces. It looked almost like sand. First thought it was a dumpling, but now it was a chocolate biscuit. Oh. Hush. Shook my head and her voice disappeared. Just wanted to be alone. But my eyes still remained fixed on the crumbled biscuit. Picked up every last gr crumb and wrapped them in a tissue. Oh, I might as well eat it. So <laughs> then. What's so funny? Hey, Lashed out at Anzo out of embarrassment, mainly. I imagine someone peeked into my... Imagine someone peeked into your private diary. You'd feel embarrassed, wouldn't you? That was essentially what Nolika was to me. She was my secret. I didn't want anyone else, anyone to see her nor know of her. She was my friend and my friend alone. I told myself I wasn't at fault in any way. It was Anju Anzu's fault for sticking her nose in. What I wanted was to protect my secret. What was so wrong with that? I just didn't want to accept that I was to blame. Mm, I'm so hungry. Ever since I yelled at Anzu, I stayed cooped up in, my, in the room studying. Neither my dad nor the housemaid had come around to check on me. But eventually I got hungry. Whenever dinner time approached, my stomach would grumble right on cue. <laughs> Shut up! Staggering a bit, I poked my head out of the door and checked the hallway. Couldn't bring myself to face Anzu, so I had to avoid going to the living room where everyone was at all costs. I just had, I'd just take some ham from the refrigerator, some bread, and make myself a sandwich. Wait, what's this doing here? The moment I stepped out of the room, I spotted something yellow placed outside near the door. It was a yellow piece of paper folded beautifully and small enough to fit in the palm of my hand. Unfolded the paper to find chocolate biscuit. Who done this? Who bothered me when all I wanted to do was uh, when all I wanted was to be left alone? But it's nice and sweet. When I placed the biscuit in my mouth, the sweetness overwhelmed me. I took bite after bite until I was practically stuffing it in my mouth. Because it was really good. 
I'd fill in my stomach with the biscuit. I was finally able to calm down. Went to Dad, told him about the fight I'd had with Anzu and, apo Anzu and apologized. But I wasn't able to apologize to her directly. Once we met Eyes, she got scared and ran away. It was all my fault. She made an effort to get closer to me, and I practically spit in her face. So long after, I began attending the local school. I'd intended to use the Japanese I'd learned to communicate with my new classmates, but it was more challenging than I thought. We've heard that one. Due to that, I ended up being ostracized by everyone. Anzu avoided me at home, and when I went to school, I was all alone there too. Then one day, Anri came and talked to me. We started Japanese, started studying Japanese together, and I finally made friends at school. She and I even got much closer too. But Anzu still hadn't quite warmed up to me yet. I knew and understood why I'd done something truly awful to her. It was all my fault. The day flew, days flew by, and before I knew it, I'd already been here for three months. Oh, you're right, I'll be back in a little bit. You know, even if that is a figment of his imagination, it is. Sh it sure is real fucking useful that the figment of his imagination can accurately remind him of the time when he has to do things. I can't do that without a figment of imagination. <sighs> uh, left the pencil on the table and exited the room. Now I had to find it. Now there it is. That treasure hunt ended quite quickly. A little bundle that had become accustomed to finding is placed outside my door. I had been, it had been going on for quite some time. I'd received these strange gifts every day at three o'clock without fail. Didn't know why, but I knew who was doing it at least. <laughs> Though I knew that if I tried approaching her about it, she'd just dart off before I'd had, I'd had the chance to ask anything. So I continued feigning ignorance and taking the sweets. I didn't want to be friends with her, but I had to take things one step at a time. She was a fragile girl, so one misstep could ruin everything. What's it gonna be today, I wonder? Finding out what she'd brought me had quickly become the highlight of my day. It was funny. I could tell exactly what sort of mood she was in based on what was based off what was in there. Biscuits were a normal day, while hard candy meant she was feeling happy, and if it was chocolate, she was in a bit of a peevish mood. Still had yet to hold a decent conversation with her, but I felt that we were connecting with each other through these snacks. Hmm. When I went to grab it, however, my f eyes met with something. That something, being a girl with gem-like eyes, was fixed, fixedly staring at the bundle. Actually, she was moving her hands, too. Yet she held a pencil and a sketchbook. Uh, who are you? Stay. S sorry. I ended up apologizing to her in the heat of the moment, but without really knowing what I was apologizing for. Cookie, cookie. The girl continued to observe the bundle with those deep blue eyes of hers, moving the pencil around to sketchbook with ease. Mm. She was pretty cute, but she kind of reminded me of a doll in a way. Uh, when are you going to finish your drawing? She stopped her hand and then passed the sketchbook to me. Mm. I can look at it. It was her way of saying yes, apparently. The sketchbook and had a gander what she'd drawn. The hallway and the bundle were depicted in perfect detail. The drawing was so accurate that you'd have trouble believing it wasn't a photograph. It was always seemed too beautiful in a sense. Yeah, it is a good drawing. It's so pretty, I almost thought it was a photo at first. For some odd reason, she wasn't responding to me. But... I don't know if this is the right words to use, but it feels kind of lifeless. Samui. Never mind, forget I said that, it's just my opinion. Mm. I early gave her the sketchbook back as she sunk into a pensive silence. I figured she was probably angry that I said that about her drawing. What's your name? Ikiru. Hmm. I hadn't a clue who she was. A girl from the neighborhood who had wandered in here by accident, perhaps. Anataga. Yeah, but how come you know my name? My dad did. My full name was technically Yuto, but uh, he 
Even I got called by the nickname you in English, so, uh, England, so it was fine. Heck, you do, right? You told me your name just a minute ago. Her head seemed to be off in the clouds. Uh, so you know my dad, Hikiru. So you're not lost or anything. Huh? And you just stopped to casually draw a picture. Oh, okay. So such a strange girl. Who's Hikaru? So you're like Anzu. Right. So you don't know a lot about our family, but the one thing she didn't know was that her sister, where, where, where her sister Hikaru was. Want to go look for Hikaru together? She walked past me and peeked inside my room. What's wrong? Mm. Um, you heard me. Yeah, it's a secret. Uh, because they're a fairy, okay? Yeah, it's incredibly embarrassing to say these things. But I couldn't lash out at her like I did with Anzu. I just had to endure the shame and keep cool. Surely she'd lose interest eventually if I kept rambling on about this fairy nonsense, I thought. Yeah, I can see fa what did you just say? You see you can see fairy Sekiru? She had a completely straight face, I couldn't help but wonder if she was being serious. Fairly Hekiru could see things that other people couldn't. Still that struck me as some she probably got from watching anime or reading manga. According to her dad, though, God has blessed her with a talent for drawing or something. Adults paid large amounts of money to buy her pictures. Whenever she produced something good, her dad would rub her head. She enjoyed that so much that she continued drawing, and after a certain point, she earned the nickname The Girl Who Can See Fairies. Oh, so that's what she meant. Nope, can't draw at all. And my fairy is that he were near as cool as, the one, cool as the ones you see. I'm the only one who can see and talk to her. Whenever I'm feeling sad and alone, she appears and makes me feel better. I know very well, knew very well that Nuruka was no normal girl. Fairies aren't some beautiful mystical creature. They aren't some beautiful mystical creatures. Nuruka was nothing more than a figment of my imagination. Just like how young children pretend their dolls can talk back to them. What I was doing was playing a game of make-believe, creating the sister I'd always wanted, but never had. Never had a bad day and shut myself in my room to cry, she'd appear out of thin air. She was the one who got me through my lowest points. And it's no exaggeration to say that she's the reason I'm able to smile and be positive. She was my little sister, my secret. I don't want anyone else to see her or even know of her. She exists. But she existed for my own comfort and no one else's. I knew if I told someone about, someone about her, they'd just laugh at me and tell me I'm crazy. That's why I raised my voice at Anzu. I had to protect Noroka. And I knew that if Hekiru learned that I was talking to an imaginary friend, she'd ridicule me too, or so I thought. Huh? Aren't you gonna laugh at me? Go on, I know it's weird. I think it's cool. That was the last thing I'd expected to hear. I was dead certain that she'd laugh, point a finger at me, and call me stupid. 
was ready for it to insult Noroka, to insult my precious sister. Why are you rubbing my head? Uh, when she said that, I realized that I actually was crying. Thanks, but I'm fine. These are happy tears. Yeah, the nun from my place, uh, from the place, place I lived that before here, said that there are times when you cry because you're sad, times you cry because you're happy. She did her head quizzically and then slowly stepped away from me. Mm -hmm, thanks. She really was an odd girl. She started laughing at me when I told her about Nodoka and she even tried to console me when I cried. She was gentle. She was kind, gentle, warm. I didn't know why, but being with her just made me feel at ease. She accepted me for who I was, and even making me feel so happy, I try I cried tears of joy. I. You don't have any? You can be my friend then. Yoto? Yep. Uh, would that make you feel better? Of course. Once you become friends with someone, you're friends forever. So whenever you feel sad and alone, just remember that you have me. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's go and search for your sister now, okay? I can introduce you to my friends later, so don't worry. Uh, you'll make lots of lots of friends. I stretch out my hand towards her and she gently takes it. Hand in hand, we then walk around, walk off in search of a sister. Ruka? I heard Nodoka's voice and quickly turned around. I peered inside the room and saw the white curtains rustling in the wind as the wind blew in from the open windows. Window. That was the story of how I first met Hekiro. That was the story of how I ended up saying goodbye to Nodoka. Clover days. Mm. So I love my eyes to the bright rays of sunshine seeping into the window. To the wall. Uh, um, oh, morning already, huh? Looks like that's gonna be a warm out today. Actually, on second thought, swelteringly hard. I feel like I'm really stuffy in my bed, too. What's this? Someone else sitting under my covers, fast asleep. Well, that's probably why I was feeling so stuffy. Anani? Nah, it sounds like Anzu. She must have snuck into my room in the middle of the night again. Alright, it would be a shame to not gaze lovingly at my sweet sister as she sleeps, so that I will do. Having decided that, I flip over the covers only to find that it's not my sister. <laughs> Heck you! Do you both snuck in here?! Anzu I could accept, but why is Hekiru here with her? Oh crap, don't tell me she touched me while I was asleep. I'll check the sheets and our clothing for any noticeable stains. None there. None of our clothes either. All clear, Captain! Uh, still, all hell will break loose if someone walks in on this scene. I gotta wake him up fast. Come on, it's morning, wake up, you two! Lightly jostled their shoulders. Hekiru seems completely gone. Anzu, however. Ah, are you awake? Great. Uh, take Hekiru with you and. What? Please. That can wait until later. Oh, 
Oh no, please stop this, dear sister of mine! Tell her to stop, but she keeps nuzzling her head against my chest anyway. <laughs> she must still be half asleep. Don't get me wrong. I looked by my little sister. But now is clearly not the time. I must steal myself and... No! What are you? I'll do that pillow. Uh, that pillow be my deck. Don't go rubbing your head on that, damn it. And making it be hard for me not to. Ah, I've been defiled. Oh, hey, Kiru, thank God you're awake. Get Anzu off. Ah! In response to my plea for help, she wraps both her hands around my head, pulls me in, and pushes me down on the bed again in that position. Hey, let go of my head, will you? Oh, God, her soft, squishy boobs are touching my cheek right now. Okay, uh, you know, you know what that means, uh, you know, can't let, let can't let him live. <laughs> if hold gun like this, you never will miss in fear of hitting hands. Uh. Ah! Don't caress my pecker, please! I'm begging you! You're, you're about to make one each. I'm going to naughty boy in the mode. Dude, boobs in my face, head against my dick. I can't run away, I'm cornered. I'm actually going to climax for love. Some girl I haven't seen in 10 years hugging my face, and my sister ha giving me the special treatment down below. Oh god, that's actually really fucking hot. <laughs> Yes, and I'm not the only thing rising right now! Huh? Ah, crap. Ah! Fuck, fuck, fuck! Oh, he's gonna walk in on this! Alright, I'll just throw the sheets over them, and it'll look like nothing's happening. I feel like that'll just make it look worse. <laughs> Hello to you too, sister! Yeah, I'm fine. Just had the night sweat since it's so hot out, you know. So this me. Hard home band this sea. Korekara Himasini Kiyoma got the koto de show. Yeah? Tokoro de Hikaru songa. Hikiru son to hand no sugataka miatara naito. Savider no de sugar. Hm. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mo. Mo is just a little voice. Must have called a cold, called a cold. What's this now? <laughs> she verts her guy as throwing the occasional, occasional embarrassed glance at me. More specifically, the big bulge beneath the sheets where my crotch is. Her face is beet red. Oh, stop that. You, <laughs> you're gonna make me blush if you stare that hard at my big willy. How could you? She ruthlessly, ruthless, ruthlessly pries the sheets off of me, from me, revealing Anzu and uh, Hekiru Hek beneath them. Oh, after looking at them, at the two of them, she faces me with the most exaggerated smile possible. Oya, oya, Yuta-san, this is how you do this? I was looking at this for a long time, and I was going to go to the hall in one. That's not what you think it is. They slipped in here while I was asleep, I swear. See, 
see I'm innocent. Please save me, sister dearest. <laughs> no, sister, why are you joining them? Please save me. <laughs> ah, he can't who saved me. I'm innocent, I swear she's the one to flowering me. Uh, after a rude awakening, Hekiru pushes both Anzu and me off my, off my bed. Once she confirms that the noise is gone, she closes her eyes peacefully and falls back to sleep. Ow, that hurts. What was that all about? Hekiru doesn't often raise her voice like that, but I guess at least I was able to avoid the worst case scenario. あんりだ。おはようございます。おはよう、ハンズ。いよいよ。どうして光ちゃんまでというか、なぜ私は兄さんの部屋に同棲また寝ぼけて、ゆうとさんのベッドに潜り込んだのでしょう。ヘキルさ
I don't know why my thought just now was suddenly just like fucking one of them just walking up to the bed just like fucking full on POWER GAZER! Just full Terry Bogart's mattress flies into the air. I don't know why that was my thought, thought process immediately. <laughs> In response to Anza's comment, our sleeping beauty rolls around the bed five times to play just how unwilling she is to get out of bed. This gets a smile out of Hikaru. But hearing that, I ju recalled just how much Hekiru used to sleep when we were kids. She'd puff out her cheeks if any of us dared to try and wake her. Well, if she wanted to sleep, she was going to sleep. Hekiru has a lot of different things to do with the things that we can do. Brimming with confidence, she walks over to Hekiru and whispers in her ear. Hekiru? In response to her sweet, loving wake-up call, Hekiru sits upright and says, <laughs> I can at least something, say something a little nicer. Alright, fine. We're short on time, so I'll just have to fight back the embarrassment and get this over with. I walk over to her and mimic Hekiru's tone as a whisper in her ear. Hekiru? Actually, my breath is tickling her ear, isn't it? She may be half asleep, but man, her voice is just so sweet. My heart's racing now. It's that sweet, alluring voice calls to me as she exhales a small puff of breath filled with a sweet scent from her little rosy lips. Just a bit closer and I'll be in kissing range. Yesterday's incident immediately flashes to m in my mind. I touched those lips. Enacting Andri's order, Anzu hugs me tight so I can't do anything while Hikaru flops Hekiru out of the bed. Man, those clothes of Andri hadn't stopped me, I was about to do some. Uh, uh, one second, let's do this, and the other, it's don't. Honestly, she can be, be she can be self-confusing at times. Oh, you want some too? Whatever you say. Classic response for sure, but her tone doesn't quite match what she's saying. Good hello, Hekiru. She looked almost like a zombie, but the second she lays her eyes upon me, she springs to life. Hekiru is gazing right into my eyes. Yeah? You didn't fuck, okay? Uh, okay. Like, it's, all she did was call my name, but there was something so adorable about it. Can't underestimate the seductive appeal of a girl who's just woken up. <laughs> she nods and begins taking her pajamas off. 
Um, are you just gonna strip it right here in front of us? <laughs> ah! Wow, I got kicked out. Okay, okay. How, how come I got kicked out of my own room? That's just plain ain't right. Oh, Anri, you came out to check on your dear brother, didn't you? Man, you don't have to have a shred of faith in me, do you? Wow, it hurts so good. Well, good thing I kicked out. I got kicked out on a sneeze. So Hanky to get naked. I sure would have reached Nirvana, but uh, I'd be cast to hell straight after. <laughs> be giggling about. Alright, who's your dead? It was the period right after Hekiru and I became friends. She liked me so much that she'd practically never leave my side. The certain someone was always watching us from afar. Her twin sister, Hikaru. Kara had a fairly reserved personality like Anzu didn't warm up to me initially. But there was one key difference between the two of them. That being... She was the one that came up to us and asked if she could join. I was so happy to hear those words from her that I extended my hands with a smile. Of course you can. I want you to be friends with you too, Hikaru. So come play with us. <laughs> that was the story of how I became friends with Hikaru. Wait up! Back then, Hekiru and Hikaru were practically indistinguishable from one another. Though, despite being twins, they had contrasting personalities. Hekiru was soft-spoken and a little scatterbrained, whereas Hikaru seemed introverted, but was actually quite outgoing and cheerful once you got to know her. They reminded me a lot of my own sisters. Odds of being Anzu would sound and watch us play from a distance. Anri, on the other hand... Okay, I'll be there in a... Hey, hey, play nice, you two. あんでは半蔵と遊んでればいいの。独り占めなんてさせない。独り占めというか、二人占めしてるのはあなたたちじゃないですか。私だってお兄ちゃんと一緒がいいです。お兄ちゃんを返してください。They'd often bicker and get into fights over who got to play with me. Beating them off for each other was an ordeal. <sighs> ah, sure brings back memories. That applies to you too. You'd call me Onichan all the time and you'd want to be with me 24 7. Can't believe it's really been that long. I guess ten years is enough time for a child to grow into an adult. But have we actually been a become adults yet? If so, then in what ways are we? Well, I guess only kids fuss about whether or not they're an adult. <laughs> I recall something she once said to me and forced a smile. It's a safe, self proclaimed big girl obediently lets me continue ruffling her hair. After finishing the breakfast that she unprepared for us, we all headed off for school. Along the way, though, Hekidu suddenly latched onto my arm and snuggled against me. Ah, uh, soft and sage of her breasts is just heavenly. Um, Hekiru, may I ask what exactly you're doing? 
Okay, hold up. There's a whole lot I have to say about that, but could you please not call me your husband out here in public? What if someone from our school hears you? We can discuss that later, I promise, but just please for now. <sighs> Thank goodness she can be persuaded easily. Okay, never mind. I guess I'm speaking a foreign language. Can you call me by name, please? And it does seem like she's going to unglue herself from... ...from me either. The whole school is going to be gossiping about me if someone sees this. Hans walks to the opposite side and latches onto my free arm. What do I... Do I not have any say in this? No. They respond in perfect sync. <sighs> should, should I be fine with this? I mean, it's nice that we got along so well and having their boobs squish against me feels great. So, eh, I guess it's fine. As expected, uh, Hikiru has the big Hikiru has the big boobs of the two. One day, Anzu. One day. You're imagining things. What? No, no, I was not. Yes, I swear. I was just thinking about how wonderful your boobies are, soft as freshly baked bread. I tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I uh, guess yours are like a work of art. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. All right, let me try that again. You have some very fine boobies. I think she appreciated the comment. It's hard to tell since her facial expressions don't change. I can feel two very pointed gazes coming from behind me. Man, get off! Get, get me off this train! I want out! So, だけどごめんね。まだ契約してないんだ。昨日今日日本に来たばかりだから。では、放課後になったら契約しに行きましょう。電話。言うともできる。Yep, <笑> Karu, I don't see any problems with technology. Hikaru, the I don't see having any problems with the technology, but Hekiru sort of worries me. Has she ever even used the cell phone before? Kept in contact via email, but while they were overseas, but uh, the way they were written felt like Hikaru was the one typing it all out. Hmm. <laughs> A pair of girls walking along the sidewalks happen to spot us and begin murmuring amongst ourselves themselves. Man, I know how bad this looks. I better clear the air now before rumors start spreading. Hey, uh, I know what you're thinking, but it's not. Oh, that's a surprise. Uh, what? Girls ignore me and run straight to where Hikaru is. The moment they get there, Hikaru puts on a smile like never seen before, uh, seen, seen her make before, and answers their request. Hey, 
That's rubbing the girls' heads. She plays her, her hands on their cheeks and softly whispers. Oh no, she's the gay maker. Kawa waves the girls goodbye with a dazzling smile as they squeal and swoon. All I could do was stand there and watch this whole scene unfold in complete and utter embarrassment. Well, I'm just gonna go kill myself now. Man, this is so damn embarrassing. I just wanna crawl in a hole and die. <laughs> oh, I thought you knew Andre. Goddess worked uh, as a model overseas. I think she followed in her mother's footsteps, if I recall. Ah, her model. そうだったのですか。私あまりそういうのを見ないもので。それはいけないの。もっと自分を輝かせないと 彼女の一人もできないよ。Wait, what did you say girlfriend? Now I think about it, she was smiling rather rather amicably towards these two girls. If that wasn't a business smile, then does that mean she swings that way? ファッションとかそういうのは別にいいんです。私 Kamari Karu laid off, and he's already plenty cute as she is. Yuta-san!こらこら!ゆうがそうやって甘やかすから!あんずとアンリは胸が小さいままなんだよ!おめでとうございます!ゆうがそうやって甘やかすから!あんずとアンリは胸が小さいままなんだよ!おめでとうござい
ここいつもの待ち合わせ場所アンズナイ、ロケリチョトンフラウン、アンリフォーズスマンテンサイキルドトゥースそこで待っててもツバメさんたちは来ませんよどうしてツバメさんとトラキチさんは演劇部の練習があるんです泉さんは朝もバイトで忙しいですから部活アルバイト Yep, they won't come along no matter how long you wait there, unfortunately. Occasionally we'll go to school together when they don't have practice, but like yesterday, those days are an exception. <coughs> Hekiru stands frozen in place, the realization must have hit her hard. It was my fault for not explaining it to her beforehand. I realized that while I see Tsubame at the others every day, Hekiru and Karu haven't seen them in ten whole years. I bet they were really looking forward to meeting them. Meeting up here for school. We're doing well in time, though, so we might be able to make a quick stop and say hello. Andri, you and Anz go to school without us. Thought we might swing by the drama club for a brief visit. After saying goodbye to my sisters, I take Hekido and Hikaru up to school's roof terrace. It's not a place you often find many people at. Maybe some come for here for lunch, but no one would be up here this early in the morning. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? This looks like chill as fuck. Well, aside from them, that is. Oh, there they are. We spot Tsubame a short distance away doing some stretches in her tracksuit. The drama club mainly does two things up here vocal training and physical exercise. Tsubame does the latter at the moment. Good, hello! Do you mind if we watch? While she's spreading her legs on that mat, she lifts her leg neck to speak to me. Damn, that's a nice position. Huh? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess it has. Anyway, don't mind me. Just pretend I'm not here and continue with your practice. After that, you resume stretching. Hmm. What a beautiful view. The tracksuit bloomer combo is amazing. Good lord, those guys. And when I recall how she got me with those sexy black thigh highs yesterday, I can, can't peel my eyes away. The thigh highs have a sp nice appeal, but seeing them exposed like this is pretty hard in its own right. While I'm here to watch and that's what I'm doing, just pretend I'm not here. <laughs> she chuckles and resumes stretching. I mean, that wasn't a lie, that's why I came here. It's not my fault she was in such a such, such sexy position when I arrived. That reminds me of God I had to, I was actually going to call up for the, call the barber today and fix a fucking appointment. Oh well. She spreads, she spreads her legs even further while throwing the occasional flitting glance my way. The more she stretches, the more her upper body leans forward, causing those big titties to hang down. Even though they're big, they don't droop. They maintain a consistent shape even as they hang. It's like I'm looking at two giant melons. Man, just imagine if she took that jersey off right now. That'd be truly a sight for sore eyes. Huh? When did I? Let's come back to my senses. I realize that I've moved directly in front of her, so I can closely observe her stretches. What? Damn, I got a bone without even realizing it. Those dynamite tits of hers crap back quite a powerful punch. I know. We men are sad, pitiful creatures. Absolute. Ah! I really need, need a way to shut my mouth, keep a horniness in check. 
もうダメだよ私ならいいけど他の子にそういうこと言ったら嫌われちゃうよ。I'll take that to heart! What was I doing? What I was doing was borderline sexual harassment, so thank God she was willing to forgive me. Though she does make a valid point of it at this stuff around other girls, I could be in for a world of trouble. Gotta learn to exercise more self restraint. Oh, so that you can. Just a little bit of a problem. Okay. Okay. この辺がプニプニしてきた気がするんだけど、気になる ?She points to a region of her belly, but to be honest, I don't see any flab at all. I think you look perfect. In fact, I'd even love to touch. Excuse me! <笑>まあ、大エッチなこと言って。でもやっぱりちょっと気になっちゃうか。うん、燃やそう。動いて、立つダニク !She nods with determination and returns to her stretching. I don't know why girls are always so conscious of their weight. She's perfectly fine as she is now, in my opinion. <laughs> now she's stretching her body to its limits. She must really be concerned about this supposed excess fat. Say it again, she's not fat at all. Are, but no, other than that, no. Damn, her thighs are jiggling. <laughs> I like, I like how thick your thighs are, though. Yep, they're sexier with a bit of meat on them. Makes me want to rub them and squish them. Okay, I think I managed to turn down my creepy vibes a little bit. She starts whispering to herself, then looks at me and says, Say what? I'm sorry, but any healthy young man would go crazy if a girl said that to him. <笑><笑>もう、エッチのことじゃなくて、ストレッチの一環だよ。生理運動もしなきゃだから、言うなれば、マッサージだよ。医療行為だから健全だよ。Oh, so I'd just be giving you a massage. So, massage, da yo. I reflexively gulp upon hearing this offer as she just extended to me. I can massage those juicy thighs of hers with my bare hands. I'd be able to rub them. Rub her thighs. Typical excess fat serves no purpose for animals, but boy, do we men love that meatiness. Thick, meaty thighs, fat bubble butts, big, shapely tits. It's well, and it just so happens to possess all three of those, giving her a sexual sex a sexual appeal that's off the charts. I don't know if she's aware, but she's uh, actually pretty well known among the guys at the school. I'll occasionally hear some talking about her in the hallways, and he's willingly offering that sinful, sinfully sexy body to me. Well, if it's body for exercise, I guess I'd have to do it. Yeah, it is 100% necessary. <laughs> It's so what you're thinking. I'm just helping her with her exercise. I'm already familiar with her body, so it makes the most sense for me to do it. Huh? Ekiru! Shit! I ended up spilling the beans the moment she said my name! It almost feels like one of those situations where the husband and wife are doing you know what and the kids open the door. Reminds me of that fucking picture. <laughs> that was that fucking video where the dude is sitting on the couch and the, and the woman is obviously about to like fucking twerk on his on his lap. And suddenly the kids show up and suddenly the woman just acts like she's going getting down on her on all fours to act like a frog and just hops around with the kid and the dude just like kinda also gets down and hops around as well really awkwardly. <laughs> What? No, there's nothing sexual about it. I just see her move her arms and legs on a daily basis, so I'd be able to tell if she was hurt or aching or whatever. 
Kao just shoots a smug smirk my way, whereas Hekiru glares at me with puffed cheeks. She then begins to undress right on the spot. Oh God! What the hell are you doing? Whoa, that's a gigantic smile on your face. I kind of noticed this yesterday, but whenever uh, Hikaru is around Hekiru, she kind of becomes a degenerate? Is that the word I'm looking for? I hope I didn't rub off on her too much. Yep, they're just who you think they are. やっぱり、ヘキルちゃんとヒカルちゃんなんだね。久しぶりだね。つばね。お日さん。本当に久しぶり。うわ。懐かしすぎて泣けてまうわ。つばめは相変わらず大げさだな。でも驚いたよ。
同情はしないでおこうかそれでツバメはここで何をしてたんだい朝のランニングと声をよく出すためのストレッチだよ舞台の上で動き回るから体力づくりもしないとね And it's a good way to burn some excess calories. ほどよいくらいとか言っといてやっぱり気になってたんだゆうくんの嘘つき<laughs> Sorry So I'm a sweetly chides me causing me to break out into a smile The change really brings back memories So mom and I used to banter all the time during drama club practice あの盛り上がってるとこ悪いんやけど皆さんワイのこと忘れない<笑><笑>君は誰たちょちょちょちょワイやワイみんなのアイドルトラキチくんやがなだからどれトラでも巨人でもいいから男は近づくなその特納ソースみたいな顔を見てると胸焼けがするそない寂しいこと言うなやせっかくの再会なんやでワイの熱い抱擁受け取ってんかってわけでレッツフォーリンラーブキャッだから近づくなこのクソ虫ヘブラットラキチ stretches out his hands only for Hikaru to shriek and land a beautiful roundhouse kick on him He goes flying off the terrace and leaves the world of the living rest in pepperoni トラキチ Goodbye, my friend. Your memory will live on forever in our hearts. You're just insufferable. このやりとり昔と変わらないね。Yeah, really、もしかして演劇部ってトラキチも入れて二人だけかい三年は進学のために引退や。空いた時間に練習見てくれはるけど、役者として舞台に上がることはもうない言うてはった。Oh, really? The majority of the people in the, in the drama club are in it for fun, so I imagine all the third years have shifted into study mode by now. だから、頑張って新入部員を入れないといけないの2年生は私とお兄ちゃんだけだし Good luck with that. 何他人事みたいに言うとるんや手伝おうっちゅう気はあれへんのかい You want me to? せや You が戻ってくればワイもツバメも大助かりやちゅうわけで You やっちゃいなや戻ってくればってどういうことだい You くんは2年前まで私たちと同じ演劇部だったの。Yeah, I have to devote my time to my time now to studying since I'm the successor of the family business. I still do enjoy I still do enjoy acting though, and I watch plays in my free time. I enjoyed what acting with Zbam and Trakichi so much that I even gladly volunteered to help at that time. You guys do end up shorthanded though, just mention it to me. I can help out when my schedule permits it. でも、おうちの事情が。I'll be fine, I'm sure Shion would allow me if I asked her. ありがとう。ゆうくん、やっぱり優しいね。Come on now, you're gonna make me blush. <laughs> でも、ほんとのことだな。That jubilant warm smile of hers causes me to break out into a grin too. It's so soothing talking to t s a b a m a like this. I love that smile of hers. She was the one who lifted me out of that pit of the spears, so I'd like to repay the favor in any way I can. Whoops. <laughs> ありがとう。ツバメ、今でもお姫様だったらよかったんだけどね。今は脇き…私、演技下手だし、どうもあんな大役に選ばれることないんだろうな。ふーん。選ばれるね。どうしたのヒカルちゃん。なんでもない
部外者が口を挟むことじゃないしねま趣味を持つのはいいことだと思うよ青春には息抜きも必要だからね息抜きうっちゃ遅れてめんごめんごあわそれんあれゆうちゃんじゃんそれにヘッキーとヒッキーまでヘッキーヘッキーおはりんその呼び方はやめろって言ってるだろ引きこもりみたいじゃないか<笑>メンゴメンゴダブルメンゴ After her abrupt appearance, she charmingly sticks out her tongue and apologizes. Kind of thankful that she didn't manage to me yesterday and she had to become the temporary advisor for the drama club. My fucking eyelid keeps twitching for some reason and it's making me want to rip it out. You chan, kino wa muri te go men ne? That sure as hell is in the face of anyone who feels a morsel of regret. You schemed that whole thing to get with Chiyan, didn't you? まあね、人生一度きりなんだし、何事も楽しまなきゃ。で、どうだったどうだった十年ぶりにヘッキーたちと再会したご感想は。It was a big surprise, but I'm glad they're back. You... 結婚しよう。Wait, slow down. How does that even follow from what I just said? ん結婚ってどういうこと ?I'll explain it to you later, I promise. I'm not sure that's something the teacher should be doing. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 さすがは師匠愛の形は人それぞれっちゅうわけやなほうほうさすがは弟子一号よくわかってるじゃないそもさんシェッパーコスプレモノの AV はハンヌギに限るイエーイ After some unintelligible exchange to them loudly high five a chair That、uh, explain why I called her master. Trakichi stu is studying Eros under her wing. It's a treacherous path laden with hardships, but at the end of it, he will attain Nirvana or something or another.、Uh, I don't think filling your brain with porn is the path to enlightenment, but I'll just let him do him. Oto, c h a m y a You know, there's such a reset of the fucking conversation that I'm actually going to reset the entire fucking video. To, next, to the start of the next part. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and see you next time. Bye bye.